Hello guys, this is Karthik from ExitAutomation.com and this is part 7 of our ALM with Team Foundation Server Dev and QA focused video series. And in this part we are going to talk about understanding roles and permissions of Team Foundation Server. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 6 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Team Foundation Server Roles and Permissions for users to have access to your team project in Team Foundation Server, you need to grant them access. So Team Foundation Server has three interconnected functional areas for access management, and they are access level management, membership management, and permission management. So this is a great wide concept, but we're not going to deep dive into it a lot, but I'm going to just show you some of the great features which access level management, membership management, and permission management will be doing. And we will be doing a little demo on that because our scope for this video series is not going to be more deep dive into the Steam Foundation servers, roles, and permissions. Access level management. So controls the access only to the features provided through the Team Foundation server web application. Based on their user license, administrators grant access to basic, advanced, or stakeholder set of features. So these are the three kinds of access level that an administrator can give to a user. So he can make the user as a stakeholder level or a basic level or an advanced level. So the stakeholder level can only see the Kanban board or the Scrum report or something like that, but they don't have access to anything else. But for the basic level user, they can see uh, some of the features like view my work items, standard features, agile boards, basic backlogs and sprint planning tools, chart viewing, code, etc. Similarly, for the advanced option, there will be some more options where he can even give some kind of permissions to other users as well. So these are the different kinds of access level management which we can do from the Team Foundation Server web application. And the another management is nothing but the membership management. So the membership management supports adding individual Windows user account and groups to the default TFS groups. Also, you can create TFS groups using this particular membership management. Each default Team Foundation Server group is associated with a set of default permissions. So all the users added to any TFS groups are added to a valid user groups as well. A valid user is someone who can connect to your team project. So these kinds of membership management can be done using this Team Foundation Server as well. And the last management is the permission management. So this controls the access to specific functional tasks at different level of a system. So the object level permission set permissions on a file, a folder, a build definitions, or a shared queries. So permission settings correspond to allow, deny, inherited, allow, inherited, deny, not set, etc. So we'll talk about this permission management as well in our demo. So let's roll then. So for that, I'm going to flip to Chrome. So this is my administrator login and this is the same portal which we discussed in our last video of this video series. And as I'm an administrator, I have access to almost everything in my project, which is nothing but my employee project and also the other project which is available in my default collection. So you can see that I can go to the code window and I can see all the codes which is available for uh, my particular project and also I can view the uh, source code of that particular code. So if I click this particular CS file, you can see that the code will also be displayed for me. So this kinds of permission is not required for all the persons. If he is going to be a stakeholder, of course, he should not have access to our source code. If he is going to be uh, just a, a new guy, fresh guy who is not going to be uh, doing something else other than uh, just going to watch only the team progress, then he can actually uh, have access to only certain areas, not every areas. So in order for accessing those kinds of stuffs, we can restrict those users to certain areas. It seems like the Team Foundation Server extension is loading slowly. And what is this particular stuff? I don't know. All right, you can see that my code is being uh, now displayed and all the whole source code I can see uh, using my permission levels. 
all right so what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to have a new user and I'm going to play around with that user by setting some kind of access level management. So we'll see how we can do for that. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to the new incognito window and then I will browse through a new user. And I have a user called uh, TFS user one and I have a password for that guy as well. So I'm going to enter here and you can note that this TFS user one is a user I created in my active directory of my Windows Server 2012 R2. So since I'm using my server operating system, I can easily create some user and also I can set the permission level for that user in my active directory itself. So I'm going to call that guy for my team foundation server, but the permission for the active directory and the team foundation server are completely different. So don't mess them up here. All right. So here for this particular user, as you can see, I have access to this employee project. So even if I do a browse, you can see that this user has access to the automation framework and the employee project. And if I do a navigate here, you can see that I can go to this particular uh, code and you can see that I can do everything whatever I did for the uh, administrator. I can just see the codes here and also I can go to whichever tab I want to. So this guy, this CFS user guy is okay. I mean, he has all the access right now. But let's say if I want to restrict this user to uh, to not see uh, uh, any of these stuffs. I want to make him as a, a stakeholder for now. Or maybe I want to uh, restrict the user uh, to uh, not go everywhere in this particular page. So for that, I am going to set some access level permission uh, for this user. So for that, Team Foundation Server has something called access level management. So what it's going to do is, uh, let's flip to our uh, administrator. And I'm going to go here. As you can see, there is a gear button here. Uh, if you go to this uh, gear, uh, you can see that uh, you will get a lot of options like it's a control panel and within control panel it is going to the default collections and it is going to the project. So this is a project level permission control. So we're not going to deal with the permission control yet. Rather, I'm going to go to the control panel. And here you can see there is something called access level. And this access level is pretty important. And this is kind of uh, three uh, kind of access levels are there, something like stakeholders, basic and advanced. So again, as I said, if you're gonna be a stakeholder, then you will have access only to the work items, uh, standard features and agile boards. You will not have access to all of them as you are seeing here. So let's do a small test. Uh, maybe I'm gonna add the user, which is nothing but our uh, TFS user. Uh, user one and then I'm going to hit save changes and let's go back to this guy and uh, let's try to access uh, this particular server once again and as you can see here as a stakeholder you can access this backlog task Kanban boards and work items but nothing else and if even if I try to go to this particular employee project nothing comes here and even if you go to the work, you can just see the work, but you cannot see the code or something like that because the access is not available for this guy. Just cool, right? You can set the access level management straight from our portal itself. So this is stakeholder. Similarly, the basic option will have uh, by default for all the users, basic is enabled and he will have all these features uh, enabled and he can see all of them. If you want to make the user even more advanced, like administrator account, or you want to give him authority for a build, and you want to give him some advanced backlog and sprint planning tools and portfolio management, then this is the right choice. So you can give the user the advanced level. So you can give him the advanced level user permission as well. So let's say what if I do this, uh, I have a, a team foundation uh, TFS user one right here for the stakeholder and I'm going to add the same user for advanced as well. So if I do this, let's see which one will be taken. So I'm going to save this guy and come back here and do a enter here.
it seems like the stakeholder is gone and this guy is right now an advanced option hmm I don't know what is the correct functionality of this but uh, I just tried it maybe even it is a senseless uh, way of doing it because a same user cannot be a stakeholder uh, or uh, a advanced user uh, if he is an advanced user uh, maybe he can do everything he want to so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and also I'm going to remove from the stakeholder I'm going to add him to the uh, basic level so if you don't do anything uh, the user is by default a, a basic uh, user so you can see that he can still uh, have access to that so it is pretty straightforward all right so this is about the access level and the next thing we're going to discuss today is the permission level the permission level is the individual object level access so if I go to this control panel and let's say if I want uh, this user I, I just don't want this user to you know access the particular code because this guy is uh, is a guy who don't like coding itself but he's a kind of crazy guy he just wants to see the kind of work has been happening and what is the uh, what is the uh, bulls is spinning uh, being spinned up and all those things but he's not pretty much interested in the code and even if we give him access to the code he's pretty angry something like that so what I'm going to do is uh, let's go to this employee project uh, in the control panel and uh, let's go to the employee project and uh, uh, let's go to this particular uh, manage project security and uh, group membership. So if I go to this, you can see that this time I'm going to end up in a new tab called security. And you can see that there is an all new tabs here like overview, iterations, area, security, alerts, version controls, service hooks, and services. But this time I'm interested in this tab, the version control tab. All right, so in the version control tab, you can see there is an access control summary. And for the administrator, everything is allowed. But of course, our user is not there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit again uh, the uh, add user. And I'm going to search for TFS user one and I'm going to hit save. And as you can see, it is inherited allowed. Remember the permissions while we were discussing on our slide. Uh, there is inherited allowed, uh, allow, deny, uh, different kinds of stuff. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to, uh, let's say, instead of doing a check in, I can make him as uh, deny. Or what I'm going to do is the read permission itself I'm going to deny for this guy so this guy cannot read the code anymore so I'm going to deny this guy uh, from reading the code so I can do a save changes here let's go back to this particular user and what I'm going to do is uh, let's say uh, he still have access to this particular code so if I try to uh, maybe uh, go to this employee test and if I try to Click that particular CS file you can see that the items requested either do not exist on the server or at the specified versions or you do not have permission to access them so right now my permission is revoked so right now I don't have a permission uh, to see this particular file and it says uh, blah, 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 blah. there's a lot of uh, stuffs available I don't know what it is but uh, the only thing I understood is is the permission to access them is not there so this is how you can see set a restriction for the read access to the particular files uh, using here. So you can manage each and every objects of a particular feature within the Team Foundation server for each and every users uh, using this particular permissions. And what I'm going to do this time is, again, I'm going to do a uh, maybe not set and if I do a not set here and if I save changes again it will turn back to uh, the inherited allowed meaning uh, he will still have access to that particular code and there is one other option as of course this is nothing but the security options and here again you can uh, make that particular user uh, available and you can set him uh, some permissions so let's say if I do a TFS user one and if I save changes and if I uh, go back to that particular uh, user, uh, you can you can also make this particular user uh, have access to this particular uh, project, and he can also do all these uh, stuffs like uh, creating a test run and uh, 
deleting a restaurant and all those things so everything can be done here using this particular permission uh, level settings so there are a lot of other options available uh, in terms of the uh, kind of uh, securities and permissions that you want to give but as of now we have just as the tip of it but still you can dig in and uh, kind of read even more than what we are discussing right now you can go to the msdn or you can search for some of the articles and blogs and read more about that but as of now this is fine for getting started and understanding the roles and permissions in the team foundation server so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day